Hello everybody, we're back for part two of inking Spawn Kills Everyone 2. Just took a, a lunch break, so we're getting back to it. So we're going to get this final panel done. One, two, three. Panel three. So let's copy up these folders, because we're going to need a lot of them. So there's a lot of stuff going on, and we're going to get to it. This was supposed to be just my inks for this morning, but it's taken up already a lot of my time, so I gotta get through it. Gotta bust. I already have a snoring dog accompanying the stream. Oh, I just realized that at the bottom there, there wasn't too much goopy ice cream on here. But we're going to add a little bit just for just for show here. And on the other page, it's got sprinkles on it, so let's add a few sprinkles. And let's have this cherry. And a few more drips of this could be whipped cream as well, doesn't matter. Oh man, I made the straw really fat here. in the chat. Let me just check, get my phone up just in case the chat thing isn't working again. On a side note, I just ordered margarita mix to arrive for tomorrow because I want to have margs on the weekend, but it said it's not arriving until Monday, so boo-hoo. Alright, I got the chat open there. on this milkshake glass, it's a lovely bit of china, don't treat me like a woman, don't treat me like a man. My dog accompanying me on the snores. Hopefully, since this one's a bit later on in the day, we can get some new faces in here. Because I'm sick of all the old people that always come in these streams. Yuck. Ugh. Get out of here. Um, 
I may have gone too far with the detail on that glass. It looks kind of crap. Or do I just need to extend it so it touches the lid? Mm, that does not look great. But it'd be too much work to erase it, so... Uh, I can't leave it, though. Oy vey. I added too many little china indents. This is for Spawn Kills Everyone, Series 2, and it's going to be four issues long. Let's try and do this again without messing it up too much. That looks better. So we got a glass there. Oops, I shouldn't have drawn his lips. Yet. Is this I want it to be in front of everything else? Hey, Gabriel or Gabrielle, you still haven't told me which one's which. Enough. I'm talking to a Gabriel or a Gabrielle. Unless you did tell me and I missed it. Because I'm an ignoramus. These more of these milkshake glasses. And I'm probably going to copy and paste this one and stick it on the other side. Maybe move this drawer around. Just free transform the bottom of that thing there. Actually, the bottom of the other glass is really good. So, let's copy and paste it, shall we? This looks nice. So copy, paste. Slide that over. Stick it on. do is we're going to combine these layers and we're going to select this one and we're going to copy paste edit 
transform flip horizontal so it's not so we're doing the same thing and then what we'll do is we'll edit transform flip horizontal the straw so that they don't look like they're just copies of each other see now they look a bit different and we might paste another one make it a bit bigger and then we'll erase the straw And change it up. What's the work for today? This is for Spawn Kills Everyone too. Same thing we were working on yesterday. This works for Image Comics. And I am working with one of the founders and the president of the whole freaking company. Mr. Tom McFarlane himself. Schmod McSchmarlan. Me and Todd, we're now best friends. You know, I go to, he's going to my wedding. I go to, went to his kids' christenings. I'm a godfather to one of his kids. That's how close we are. You know, obviously I'm making all that up. We go see movies together. We have poker nights. Obviously still making all of this up. Just freezing a bit, so let me just let it save. Sorry, folks, one second. Go. Whew, struggling today. Definitely feeling a bit tired. It's Friday. I just want to drink booze and chill out. But once this is done, I've got to start inking this page as well. I should really get that page done today, but there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Sounds like your dog is dead asleep. Yep, she is. She's in my lap. <laughs> Looking super cute. Okay, so we got some milkshakes here. We need to add... bowl here. So we got a spoon. He's been eating some ice cream as well. Because if you're going to have a milkshake, you might as well go all the way, right? You might as well have bowls of ice cream as well.
the war. If any are interested in what my dog looks like, I believe that my fiance has made an Instagram for her. So you can follow her on social media. <laughs> Uh, I think it's Lu Luna the Mini Frenchie. So this right here in the corner, this is a menu. menu. I'm not going to fully ink this, but let's have a picture of the cartoon hamburger. Do, 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 do. Got to have some tomatoes hanging out, a couple of pickles. Need the meat, obviously. And then the lower bun. So that's one section. And what else is diner food? Oh, we'll put a little milkshake. I cannot remember the last time I had like a hamburger and a milkshake. I think when I was a kid. In fact, I couldn't even tell you the last time I had a milkshake. I don't eat hamburgers because I'm a vegetarian. I eat veggie burgers, but... don't often have one of these, one of these things. Oh, we need to put ice cream on it. Hamburger, milkshake, what's another cornerstone? Oh, eggs and bacon, I guess, so let's just do a couple of eggs and some wavy bacon. I guess this is here. Will be all the text for everything on the menu. So what should we have here? Five ninety-five for something. Seven ninety-nine. Six ninety-five, three ninety-nine, two ninety-nine. Something with toast. Something with eggs. Something with bacon. Burger. And then this will be. The fine print, which will say stuff like, if you choke on some of our food, please do not sue us. And here would be like an image of a big hamburger that they usually have, right? On a plate with some... 
French fries. Luckily, I just ate. Unlike yesterday, when I didn't eat until like six o'clock at night. But today, I've eaten. There we go. So we got a little menu there. You gotta have a menu, right? You gotta know what you're ordering. Let's have another. Oops. Let's have another bowl of ice cream here. Spoon sticking out. And what else we got around here? I think we have a milkshake on its side. Milkshake juice. Now I need to change this. I need to make this taller. As it's too tall, torpedo shaped. So let's stretch this up. Stretch it up some more. Love using the, the free transform tool. And then let's make this a bit bigger, like it's in the foreground a bit more. Like that. And then over here, I think we have actually a real hamburger. Hamburger. Can I get a hamburger and some french fries, please? With some extra mayo and ketchup. I used to live in America, and that's how I used to sound. Hi, I'm Will Robson. Can I have some mayo and ketchup mixed together? And then pour it down my throat. Thank you. Let's get some tomato slices here. Now, I love tomato in my hamburgers or in my sandwiches my fiance does not she thinks tomatoes are disgusting so does my dad now let's add some onions Get that big old juicy beef patty in here rest in peace you poor little cow a bit of sauce on the underlay sauce. I've drawn so many hamburgers. They're just fun to draw. That's a big hamburger. If I if I got that, I'd be very happy with my my order. Let's slide this down a bit. And let's put it on a plate. Okay, I think that's enough stuff. So something went wrong here. Didn't connect up.
That was a big snort, brother. Okay, it's connected. Connected, connected. I think we're all good to go on that. So let's size five outline. Boom. Boom. Now we're just adding extra lines in where we see fit. Should be good. Now, below it, I'm not going to do it in the new folder, I'm just going to create a new layer. Let's create a new monochrome layer. Rectangle tool, let's use this one so it fills in. And then 12, is that going to be too thick? That's going to be our countertop, but I just realized we have to draw in Spawn before we do that, because his elbows are on the countertop. So let's do Spawny. Spawny, Spawny. Oh, sorry, I missed about grilled chicken, steak, and chicken and waffles. I've never had chicken and waffles before. Uh, how can you work with the, this noise? I feel like an, an old door. <laughs> um, I tune it out because I'm so used to it. We got these big cheeks. There's also some noise. I've got the sound of uh, my fish tank, and also someone is chopping down trees outside. Got one little spawny hand there. Mm-hmm. 
So there's one arm. No, oh, actually, oh, I'm an idiot. What I need to do is... These arms need to be separate. So let's cut his face. There we go. Right, his face is cut. We're going to put that in a separate layer. All we need to do... Let me turn that layer off. All we need for this layer is just his arms, because they're the only thing going over the countertop. I think it's probably also the, the dog snoring is way louder on uh, what you hear than it is actually in real life. Because she's a very, she's pretty quiet. So I'm doing little outlines here, so I'm going to fill this in black. Looks like little highlights. I'm terrible at shading. Excuse my snipping. I'm terrible at shading, so I just do little outlines like this to signify that stuff is solid black. And when I started, I was debating whether or not I was even going to use solid blacks with Spawn. I'm not really, I don't really like to use solid blacks because I just, I just don't have the eye for it, uh, nor do I have the interest in training my eye for it. I kind of like the open line art style of my work. I think it lets colorists really get in there and prettify the stuff. And I just like, I just like the look of it. It reminds me of, you know, cartoons or old animation style. But sometimes I do some blacks, and the reason I did blacks for Spawn, because one, obviously his costume is black, but two, if you look at my art style with how white it is, when Spawn's on the page, he really pops, because he's the solid black character. So the key for this whole book really is, this is the artsy fartiness of it, is he is the only solid black thing you're going to see throughout the book, which means that he's going to be the thing that your eye goes to immediately. His, his solid blackness is, will make you look instantly at him. Snort if you agree. There we go. Okay, so now his arms are done, that means we can turn the countertop on, like so, and I think I made that line a bit too thick, so we're going to select the white, we're going to expand the white layer by, let's say, three, 
and we're gonna fill that in white, boom. Also, let's bring this panel below panel four so it doesn't stick out over it. There's our countertop, and then this panel, there we go, this spawns chubby face. Is it this layer? Yep, it's this layer. And now we can keep going. Oops, that's not the right head shape. What are you doing? There we go, that's good. It's not exactly the head shape I want, but it will do for this panel because it's kind of hard to see what's going on with his cheeks being all squished up like this. Since his cheeks are puffed up, the bit where his stuff usually goes is being pushed up over his face. So I just got lucky with the last stream with the chat working. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Can't believe after three weeks I still have a cold hanging about. It's ridiculous. Whoever got me sick, you suck. You suck as a person. No one likes you. It's nuts. I've been sick for so long. I'm going to add in white lines to really beef up those cheeks later on. This is connected all to here. Oh, my dog's awake, having a big old stretch, and she's back asleep. <laughs> Jesus, that was a big snort, Papa. Oh my God, you're not asleep, you're just snoring awake. So I like adding these little extra bunny ear tips to the his cow. Something that uh, Capullo did on his run on spawn. Over time, he added 
edit that look, and I, I still love that look to this day. Okay, we're going to select outside of that. Size 5 outline, boom. And then we'll do what we've been doing before and separate some of the lines. Let me just check the chat. Hey, as well, it's been a while since I've been able to catch your live streams. How's it going, Brain? Or Brian? What's your favorite comic artist? Greg Pulo, hands down. Then, then Tom McFarlane. Greg Pulo beats out Tom McFarlane by, like, two points. I'm back. Welcome back, Richard. <laughs> Is the snoring too much? Because I can, I can get her out of here. I feel bad, though. Do you really want to kick a dog out? Because I can kick a dog out if you want to do that. If you are willing... To have that on your soul. Kicking a dog out from her own home. Out into the cold. That can be arranged. Because I do this for you guys. So if you guys are really cynical. Sad little spawny there. Uh, what's next? What should we do next? Should we do the guys in the background? Because I have to do the booth first. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Got to do these little hands first, these little thingies here. Like beans. Yep, the snoring is part of the stream. It is a staple of my streams now. So that's one shape we're creating.
gonna do this trucker looking guy, his kids. lovely facial hair he has. Someone just posted a letter through my letterbox. He's got a big old stain around his lips from whatever he's been eating. He's not a polite eater. He's hungry. His kids drive him mad. This kid wanted to go to McDonald's, but this guy just wanted to go to his, his favorite spot. Or maybe it's not even his kid. looking over it's like is that spawn I know spawn from anywhere One second, guys.
Sorry about that. Now, if you looked here, on this guy's hat, J, E, and the final letter would be D. That's J that's a shout out to Jed, my created own character from a long time ago. Mozart, Kuto, or Mike Tudor Jr. I know Mike Tudor Jr. He's a lovely guy. He was the first ever artist to respond to my artwork years ago when I asked him. How did you learn perspective? I started learning it, and it is the most frustrating thing ever. Uh, to be honest, the way I learned perspective was I obviously read some things about it, but I learned it by using the perspective ruler in Manga Studio. That sort of built me up to giving me an eye for how to properly use perspective. It's just, I don't know, it, perspective to me was never a huge problem. I kind of got it quite quickly. It just, it just made sense to me. It was everything has to meet at these points to be in perspective. So you put those points down, and no matter what you do, you, it's going to look good because it's in perspective. I don't know. It's weird. I just, I just found it easier. I don't know. It, it was never a struggle for me. Hands? Phew. Hands were a struggle. Perspective, not too bad. There's lots of great videos out there on perspective. I mean, just as a quick tip, like, uh, this perspective is really like, okay, so draw your horizon line, right? Let's say you're drawing a building. So let's say you rough in a building, right, like this. You want the building to be this shape. This is a building. So that means that, let me zoom out here. The lines on the top of the building here and here, let me move this over. You see how they meet at a point? This is your perspective right here. This is this is a one point perspective. So any other building you want to draw would have to meet up on this line. Actually, this is a two point perspective. You see these lines here? They're eventually going to meet at a point as well. So it'd be like this, this, and then these would go like this, and then the other perspective is just pointing down. Obviously, it looks better when you use a ruler and not freehanding it. Uh, forget the horizon line I put in there as well. <laughs> Horizon line doesn't make sense for for what I eventually did. But it's all about points. Just like that's why it's called like, like a three point perspective is when you're sort of looking down at something. So let's say I can just freehand a three point perspective. So let's say this is a building, but instead of just going straight down like we did before, this is also a point. So these lines here they meet at a point. These lines up here, they're going to eventually meet at a point. And those lines too meet at a point. So that's a three point. There. 
like that, you see. I don't know, it just makes sense to me. Uh, there's something, I like, if you look at a lot of my work, like here, you see I put a lot of extra details into backgrounds and things. I just enjoy drawing backgrounds. I don't know why people don't. I think they don't like the technical side of drawing. But I enjoy it because <clears throat> the rules are set. It's, there's not much, you, you can't, like with drawing figures and stuff, you have to be anatomically correct and everything, and that's like the rules. Uh, expressive and cartoony, etc. But with perspective, it's it's anybody's game. Well, not anybody's game. I mean, it's uh, it's set like one, two, three, four, five. However many perspectives you're doing, those those rules are in place. So it's kind of relaxing, especially if I draw something like brick. Like it takes a long time to draw, but. I know how it's gonna how it's gonna look when it comes out because I I can't mess it up. So what's he got here? I think he's holding a bunch of french fries, right? The way I eat them. I grab as many as I possibly can in one hand. Back here, he's holding the soda pops. He chose the soda pops. He did not order bum fizz. But he also got his to go. Because this kid, he's with, he's making a lot of noise. And if he needs to take that kid outside, he's going to do it. He's going to leave. He's ready to, to leave the area if his kid starts being loud. Chat. The shapes and vanishing points are easy for me, but I get caught up on the equally spacing windows and columns and stuff like that. Yeah, that's uh, you've got to lay down the groundwork for that. If you're if you're doing windows, don't draw every window separately like this. That's a bad idea. You need to go follow the perspective, and even to the point where if it's hard to separate stuff like this quite evenly, you know, measure it with a ruler, um, and uh, yeah, and then like even for if you're adding all the extra stuff, like there's there's ways around it, 
Just watch as many videos as you possibly can of people doing it and you should be able to get it. Comic Artist Pro Secrets did some good tourism specs recently. Oh, I haven't seen that. He even revealed some stuff I never saw before. He looks more like a Schwepsy drinker though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've never seen anyone do ears like you before. They look good. Thank you. Um, my ears are a combination of Greg Capullo, Todd McFarlane, and just just my, my, my own style, I guess. I forgot what film I watched. I was watching a film at university when I went to film school. And I think... Oh, it was it was Colin... This is really funny, actually. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who played... Um, oh, what's his name? The guy who played Bullseye in Daredevil. What's his name? Colin something? It's not Firth, because that's the Kingsman guy. And King's Speech guy. Is it Colin Farrell? Help me out in the chat, people. Anyway, that guy, that actor. I was in film school doodling in my uh, notebook and I was learning how to draw at that point like it's taking it a bit seriously and I saw I was watching a, a film he was in a short film and um Colin Farrell yeah so it is it's Colin Farrell how's it going Akami um and I looked at his ears and I was like and I was like oh like it's just weird sometimes you just look at you can study something and then you'll see it like in real life and be like oh I get what I'm trying to draw and he has like this this weird like wobble like this here and that's where the ear hole is and then he's got a little bump around and then here and it, it's uh i've i've sort of stylized it over over time i basically just put a y inside the earlobes i was trying to show more some uh, examples but i don't think i have there's another one oh i didn't put them in there yet yeah, so I draw Colin Farrell ears. Drawing this kid with a big, stupid ginger fro. I had a very similar one when I was a little ginger brat. It's funny, sometimes if I draw gingers, um, the colorists mix them up. African Americans for the style that I draw the hair or vice versa sometimes I've drawn African Americans and the colorist thinks they're ginger <laughs> it's very strange this kid needs a haircut Oops, I see that I haven't finished some lines back here.
So in the first issue of Spawn, I barely got to draw any people in it. It's all about Spawn, basically. I think I drew in the end maybe three pe actual people, but the rest was just Spawn. And the Spawn babies, and man, I was going nuts a bit. 20 pages of drawn, like, the same character in pretty much the same location. Woof! Get that, it gets boring. But this issue is all over the place, so... I'm pretty excited about that. I've drawn Spawn's flat. Probably a hundred times. Because, you know, it's 20 pages, but there's usually like five panels a page. It adds up. Okay, so we got those two goofballs back there. And now... Um, oh, we need to do the gumball machine back there. So let's do that. So let's get an ellipse tool. Let's make it a fun shape. Okay. And then the gumball machines, they have like a little lid on top of them. that and then maybe a little South Park dot hat at the top looking type of thing I wonder what the how long like a gumball actually lasts like in one of these machines until it would go off or moldy or does it ever go moldy? And is there any nutritional value at all? Add a bunch of gumballs, and I think the best way to do that would be go into another layer. Let's make this a that's a good size gumballs. Let's put a bunch of separated gumballs. Like so. Selection, color gamut, we'll select that. We'll shrink these pops down to, let's say, three, so they have a tiny bit of pop compared to everything else, so the same thing. And then copy, paste, edit, transform, flip horizontal. And that's... Um, flip it upside down as well. Hmm. It's not what I quite planned, so we're going to put it aside. And we're going to move some of these gumballs one by one. Oops. Oh, come on. Oh my god, it's me nuts.
Oh my god. <sighs> Ooh, I'm gonna lose it in a minute. I hate when stuff doesn't work the way I'm trying to make it work. I'm just trying to move them over, but I have to click the size thing to do that. Otherwise, it doesn't move properly, and I keep changing the size of them by accident. Let's start taking them in bunches. Now, what I would usually do is I would just make a brush, but I don't really fancy doing that right now. Actually, why don't I make it a brush? Right, so let's cut that. Oops. Let's undo. Let's cut one of these. Cut. Paste. I'll show you guys how to make a brush in just in case you don't know. Now we're going to... Now this is... This little dot here is on its own layer. So I'm going to go to Edit, Register Material, Image. I'm going to call this Gumball. And you got to, this is important, you've got to click Use for Brush Tip Shape. Right down there. I always put mine in Image Material. Click OK. We're going to go over to our brushes. I'm just going to Select a brush I already have. I'm going to click Duplicate Subtool. I'm going to call this Gum Ball Robson. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the tool settings. And we're going to go to Brush Tip. We're going to delete that brush tip. And then we're going to search Gum. There it is. And now, let's see how big it needs to be. So, is it 60? No, nope, it's 50. Okay. So now, with this new tool, we should be able to just pop in a bunch of gumballs and that's how my friends you make a custom brush which as you can see already saves a lot of time okay looks good let's clear that up um, oh, it's on this layer now, isn't it? Oof. And let's erase these stragglers up here. And we got ourselves a full gumball machine. So let's put the size 5 outline. Go on. There we go. Look at all these digital trick maroos. Pop out the shapes we want to pop out. Like the lid here. Like that. And then we're going to copy the whole thing and paste it. And we're going to, oops. Is that too much? Is it too much to have two gumball machines? Maybe I'll have another machine. But I'll make this one empty. There we go. So we got gummy balls in the back and the machine in the front. There's not too many gummy balls left. Okay, let me click save because I just did a lot of work there. 
And then the final background is just left to go. Let me check the chat. See if I missed anything. Bye for everyone I had to go. Bless you all. Bye, Gabe. Every time I see either you or John from Red Live, I'm persuaded into getting Manga Studios. I always end up postponing it in the end for one doing a more painfully comic style. Is it worth it? Manga Studios is the best program. It's called Clip Studio now. Um, Gumball Robson. That is my wrestling name. I will definitely make that my wrestling name from now on. Gumball Robson. Um, yes, you should get it. And on the iPad Pro, it's £8 a month or something, so it's super cheap. As what I can tell, it's stronger for people doing line art heavy comic art. So I was wondering if the paint inside of the program is up to job. It is, and you can download a plethora of custom brushes for painting. Uh, it's very good for colouring. I do all my colouring in it. I don't do much colouring, but when I do, I use this. Right, so. Let's do this perspective then. So I'm going to follow the line of this, what I think is the seat there. And then the next line I want to follow is this line I've put up here in the background. So that is my perspective there. And I believe it's just a one point perspective. Yes, it is. I'm just going to color this to show that this is the beginning of where the background starts. So let's get to do it. But also, let me export sub tool, save, share. Google Drive. Art. Come on. What's going on here? Art. Why am I in Dropbox? I said Google Drive. Art. There we go. Custom brushes. Rob some brushes. I use the friend and ones as well. Add. Communicate. Blah, 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 blah. Couldn't even say that. Communicate. I'm doing this so that I always have the file. Because I also want to sell these as well. Couldn't communicate with the helper application. Alright, that's not working right now. Whatever. Gotta get back to work. Ceilings there. Good there. Cool. And then we're going to add some sort of mirror type deal back here. These are just some pictures, some picture frames, you know, like when celebrities come in and eat at your diner, I wonder if they'll take one to spawn. 
classic picture frame right there. Um, let's actually show an end to it. And then let's also put a little framey on this guy. Man, I was not expecting this page to take all day, but it definitely is. Happens sometimes. I was supposed to get the whole other page done and get an invoice sent off, but that's not happening. And then, what else do I want to do here? I want to bend the roof bit like this. Boom. Looks like there's a bit of a, a curve to the ceiling. If you ever know, not know what to draw for a ceiling, just look up. You'll get plenty of ideas. This is going to be the door frame. Oh, come on, perspective ruler. Didn't, obviously, do not want to draw it that way. Sorry for the gross sniffle there. I'm all about those hashtag gross sniffs. Now, just closing off sections here because I might add the tile in. We shall see. But we also need. Oops. This needs to run across. So, and I'm definitely going to add tiles on the ceiling and we're going to use our handy dandy I've used this custom 3D model brush so many times I used it in the um, what's it called the turtles cover as well handy dandy boom ceiling fan it's on the covers of Great Lakes Avengers 1 as well. I love this. It always works in any perspective, which is jokes. Actually, let's undo that and make it a bigger brush. Put that in there. Instantly adds a little extra detail. And maybe, should we get cocky? Should we go boom? Add another one in? Of this side oh yeah look at that now we're cooking now we got ceiling fans that's a sign of look how hard I spent on that time drawing those that one time this was a 3d model I traced the 3d model about two years ago oops and I've reused that so many times but hey it works Okay, so what we draw, layer are we drawing? We're drawing this layer. So let's fill in this. Do, do, do. Fill in this. 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 Mm-hmm. 
that. And let's close this off. And this. Uh oh. Undo. Clearly, this is not separated, so we can separate that. Boom. 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 Nope, that hasn't been separated either. What a jabroni. You can't see what I'm doing because you can't see the strokes I'm making. I'm just separating outside. Basically, I'm going like this. Oh, you can't see that either. <laughs> Basically, I'm going like this outside just to close off the shapes. And now they can be filled. Oh, come on. For God's sake. Separate. There we go. Right? I'll oh, screw it. Screw you. Okay. Let's add some tiles into this B. It's a diner. Every good diner has checkered tiles. Trust me, I know. I'm, I grew up in New Jersey. I knew all about diners. You go to the diner late at night after you get drunk with your friends and get a, you get yourself some chicken fingers or a hamburger and yourself a cup of coffee. Do you want a cup of coffee? Yeah, I'll make you a cup of coffee. That's how everyone spoke that I grew up with. Ya mook. Is that a derogatory term? Should I have said that? I didn't mean it if it was. It's just what I heard growing up, guys. I'm sorry. Right, let me check the chat real quick to catch up. Hey George, how's it going? Hey Kieran, how's it going buddy? Do you have a live schedule anyway? No, I don't Kieran. I just, I just go whenever I fancy. I always post on social media before. Hope it's going well with you bud. I have a channel, but it's kind of political. I need to start a comic art channel and draw my comic live. I think it would help me get exposure. Um, yeah, you. I mean, you. You will get exposure through it. Um, but don't rely on it. Uh, for everything. Don't use it as a machine for exposure. I was just, when I was first making my YouTube stuff, it was because I was learning art and everything I learned along the way I was trying to share with people. To help other people struggling. And now I do it to continuously try and help people get better at their own comic book art. But yeah, just do it. Post post videos, draw stuff. As long as you're drawing, that's okay by me.
dog all the time with these checkers. Okay, checkers. Um, and I don't think any checkers anywhere else besides the ceiling. I'll do that on a separate layer. Selection, color gamut. Okie doke. Shrink, three. That's not right. Selection, color gamut. Black. Shrink by three. There we go. Now we got some tiles, which is creating a lot of grey, which makes Spawny a pop, which is good. And hopefully my poor colorist, Greg, he'll have to fill in each tile like a black and white checker style look. Which will not be fun, but hey. Sucks to be that jabroni, am I right? Greg. Screw Greg. Team Robson. Team Pens and Inks. No one's on Team Colors. Who likes colorists? Ugh. Just kidding. Greg's great. He's gonna kick butt on this book. And I love colorists. Oh man, Tamra Bond villain. She's dope. She makes my art look way better than it actually is. And that is the whole point of a colorist's job, in my opinion. It's the whole point of an inker's job. You just every stage of comics should be elevated. Like you have the script, which is elevated by the pencils. The pencils which are elevated by the inks. The inks which are elevated by the colours. And honestly. The colors are elevated by the letters. Everything is actually elevated by the letters because the letter lettering is so important and getting it right and making it look good, it's not easy. All right, in the back here, I wanted to do a little sign on the door facing the other way. And I just need to do a little thing like that. And I'll put one of these bad boys over it. Doop. I could have just used the gumball uh, brush for that. It doesn't matter. That's a little sign. And we're going to get out the text. And we're going to do... Sorry. We're closed. Because you know how they do the flip sign thing. We're going to select it. We're going to put it in the middle. Stretch this pop out so it's nice and big. The sorry text. We're going to turn that into some sort of cursive-y looking text. this and then the we're closed actually that's a better text lawyer what's the name of that one CC I'll make everything CC. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. Then we're going to rasterize that, which makes it a flat layer. I'm going to bring this puppy down into here. This is where the background layer is, so we can just put it above that. And what we're going to do is we'll put the big sorry there. We'll take the weir and we'll free transform it. Just so it all fits. Uh, 
Then we'll take another square, and we'll make it a thinner brush, and we'll just... Oops, where are you? We'll just add that. And then select color gamut the black. We don't want this black to pop. We don't want our eyes to focus straight to it. It's not the thing you want to be reading on the page. So down to a two. We'll shrink it, fill it with white, and now we've got it knocked back in the background. So it's just a nice background detail. Okay, added the white in there, so it's now fully white. And now finally on the final links for this panel, and for this page. Just this one to go. So before I do that, let me just check the chat. I'm so tired of big companies using the tiles I grew up reading for political correctness that I want to inject something new in, in the culture, but it's hard. Everyone gravitates to old stuff. Yeah, I guess so. That's your opinion. I mean, I love a lot of the new comics that are coming out today. Uh, you should be nice to your colorists. Got any idea of how much they can ruin your art? If not, better hope he doesn't hear you. I was obviously joking. And me and Greg are good friends. Um, Stuart. Uh, I need to get a tablet. No more buying art supplies and sniffing Sharpies and wasting paper. Hey, there's nothing wrong. You could do it that way. You could do it another way. Oh, do you have any original stories you want to illustrate? Yes, I do. I have tons. Tons and tons and tons. I just don't have the time. I'm too busy drawing other people's stories for money. Until I can make money drawing my own stories, I'll have to keep doing this. But it's not the worst thing in the world, working for Tom McFarlane. The old toddy boy. The Canuck with a mean left hook. Because he's left-handed and he's good at drawing. This I'm just adding some sort of metallic rendering. Not too much rhyme or reason. I think I've gone over this before. What I like to do is thin in the front and then thick in the back, back to thin. A few extra straggles. Essentially, this is a reflection, right? So it's a reflection of what's around him. I know some people go into super detail where like, all right, there's spawn there, so really, there should be a big shape here, right? And that's Spawn. And the rest is his reflection of the whole diner. But when I always try and do that, like, Jim Lee does that, and it's nuts when you see him do it. Where, like, if someone's standing next to a window, he'll put, like, a check in, like, a, uh, a reflection. To show, like, that person standing next to a window. Me, I'm not that smart. I just do a couple little squiggy poos. Squiggly poos. And Bob's your uncle, we got some rendered looking stuff. And that's why I'm not Jim Lee. Now this stage I'm doing here, sometimes I do traditionally with a, with a nib. Uh, I only do that if I think I can sell the page that I'm drawing or the cover because it just takes longer than what I'm doing right here. 
so there's no need unless I was going to sell it, but I've never sold any cover or page I've done. So I've sort of stopped, I've lost interest in it because I was doing it as a way to bring in more income. But it just wasn't working out for me. And I was like, well, I can make more money, when I more income if I just do everything digital because you work quicker, which means you can do more books, etc. I was thinking the other day, I wonder how many actual comic pages I've completed in my life. Probably a lot. What's everyone's Friday plans today? Anyone going to the club? You about ready to have hers. Last time I went to a club like on a night out, it was in 2013. Like a club. I've been out a lot to gigs and bars. I guess they're clubs, but to play music, but not like I haven't gone out on a proper night out. But I have no interest in doing that anymore. I'm 27. I'm going to be 28 soon. Getting married. Honestly, the only reason I went out to clubs when I was younger was to try and pick up chicks, bro. Another life, another time. But also in 2013, I graduated. And I moved back in with my parents, and I said to myself, mm, I want to be a pro comic book artist. So the same year that I last went to the club, is also the same year that I took trying to break into comics very seriously. My dog is rolling around on her back on the carpet, being a silly goose. <laughs> Can you hear her? Oh, she's so silly. Oh, who's a silly goose? Are you a silly goose?
Uh oh, did you see that? Gonna finish this up. My pen's running low. Do you know what? I probably have to charge this. I may cool this video here. And I'll get the final links done up by my own. If that's alright with you guys, you guys know what I do. I just beef up lines, etc, etc. You'll see the final stuff. I'll show in another video. So thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to cut it off early, because I think my dog needs to go outside to do a tittle. Uh, and I need a break. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you.